Welcome to Art for All, the Sketchbook School podcast. I'm your host, Danny Gregory. Each week, we bring you stories, ideas, interviews, and inspiration to keep you company while you work on your own creative project. Whether you're drawing, painting the ceiling of a chapel, uh, composing a sonnet, making an illustrated map, weaving a tapestry, or cooking lamb chops. I hope this episode inspires you. That's our mission at Sketchbook School, to help encourage art for all. And speaking of encouragement, may I encourage you to join me in Pasadena, California on November 2nd through 4th. I'll be speaking at SketchCon, which is our first ever sketching convention. Hundreds and hundreds of creative people are going to be coming together for a long, fun weekend of drawing and painting and chatting and laughing and having a wonderful time. I'll tell you more about it in a little while, and I'll also tell you where to go to sign up. Yeah, actually, I can do that right now. So to find out more, just go to sketchcon.com. And that's con with a K, of course. Sketchcon.com. Okay, on with the show. So let me ask you this. Do you think of yourself as an artist is that a label that you feel comfortable with it at least in the the sanctity of your own studio or garage or armchair or kitchen table and can you wear it in public let's say you're at a party talking to a new acquaintance and he or she says so what do you do what do you do do you say uh, I'm an artist can you say that without hesitation? And do you feel comfortable with how the stranger responds? Do you have answers to all their follow-up questions? And can you declare this identity to everybody that you know, to your family, to your neighbors, to your bank manager? I am an artist. If so, then, well, maybe this episode isn't for you. But it is for me. Because even though I've been drawing for much of my life, I still don't feel comfortable taking on that label. I usually mumble into my drink something along the lines of, uh, I do lots of things. I, I write books. I have an online art school. I do a podcast. I like to draw. And I know for a fact that I'm not alone. I know that a lot of people, a lot of creative people, including a lot of people at Sketchbook School, just don't feel comfortable self-identifying as artists. So I decided that I would have a couple of conversations with people whose opinions I respect to see why is it that people have this ambivalence? And what can I say to those people who are so hesitant to step out and say loudly and proudly, I am an artist. As it happens, I was spending the weekend at my mother's house. Now, a couple of decades ago, my mother moved out of Manhattan to the north end of Long Island, where she lives in a little house hidden on a couple of acres of forests. Very nice. She moved there to get out of the city and to have a garden and to see how she could reinvent herself. And she did. She started doing lots of different things, including writing articles and screenplays and stories and becoming the news director of her local public radio station, and she also began making art. Combining several of her different interests, calligraphy and nature, she started making leafages, which are images of pressed flowers and ornate lettering of poetry and wise thoughts and such. For several years, she was exhibiting her leafages, and she was selling reproductions of them at vineyards and gift shops and galleries and so on. A couple of years ago, when my son Jack graduated from art school, my mother and I had a discussion about whether or not Jack was an artist. And my mother, despite the fact that she's very proud of her grandson, said that she really hoped that Jack didn't call himself an artist. Being a painter was okay, but the label of artist made her very uncomfortable. 
And this declaration stuck with me. And over the weekend, I decided I'd take it up with her and ask her what exactly she meant by it and where this idea came from. So a long time ago, I don't know when it was last year, sometime, we had this conversation about um, somebody calling themselves. You said that you, that you were happy that Jack was, had referred to himself as a painter rather than an artist. So can you just tell me, what, do you remember that yeah, conversation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it, it reflect, that, that, that sort of reflected my own, my own anxiety about being illegitimate or being a huckster or, or, you know, hoaxing people by saying I was an artist. There are two, two things to it. One is it sounded very presumptuous to say, you know, because that means that you're making art and art is something that's got very high value. And I think for the most part, art has, is in, has an integral meaning um, in the sense that even if you don't like it, you know it's art. It's not that I, I know what I like, it's that I don't know what I like, but I can tell it's art because people say so. So for me, when I first started doing my leafages, which I started in 2002, something like that, when I moved out to, to um, Long Island from Manhattan, all my, really since I was a 17-year-old teenager at Beedales, I... I wanted to be artsy, you know. It was the, also, we, it was beatnik time. We were beatniks, and, you know, in those days, having long, flowing hair was unusual. And... This is the and, late huh? 50s, early 60s. Yeah. And, and, and I remember I had a, a duffel coat, a camel sort of duffel coat, and flat shoes, and black stockings, which were not easy to find. Or maybe they were black tights, I don't know. So that was the look, and with a cigarette always. And so I endlessly sort of posed that way and sometimes was photographed that way. And that's, so I was looking like an artist, but I wasn't one. I wasn't, I was a student. I was doing languages. I would never came near a paintbrush or any art tool. I guess I wrote poetry in the sort of anguished way that 17-year-olds do. And... And that kind of that look always stayed with me. But I, and then it became flowing, you know, uh, gypsy kind of skirts and bright colors. It you know changed from the black. And I realized it was only when I came here and had given up my prof my the way I earned my income, doing focus groups. That it was then that I realized I could, and I was starting to work with leaves and calligraphy and stuff, was then I realized I could actually maybe not only look like an artist, but maybe actually be one. But I was always very uneasy. When, the first, when I first started doing these things, and they just came to me, I mean, I, I hadn't planned it. Um, and I'd taken, I, I didn't know what to make of what I was doing. So I took it around to a couple of people, artists, war artists out here, and one a woman who had a small gallery, and she looked at my work and she looked at it for a long time. She went through it, back again, and then she was obviously hesitating, and then she said, hmm, I think this is craft, not art. And I thought, oh God, you know, I don't know. I mean, crafts, I'm a craft, hmm, craftswoman. So, I don't know. So, so, so that idea, that that uneasiness with seeming inauthentic, you know, has stayed with me. And to this day, when somebody call, refers to themselves as an artist, it sounds always presumptuous to me. But then it's, you know, I might think that too of a poet. I mean, a poet writes poems, but I guess it's not as it's not as as crass. To call yourself a poet because poems are I don't I don't know I'm not sure but somehow the art thing so I've never called myself an artist other people have I just I was made something as I do leafages or I'm a leafageologist leaf, leaf, somebody called me something like that 
you know, um, but then, but with, even with writer, you know, I sometimes feel, and I've, God knows I've written a lot. I just haven't published a lot. I haven't published anything, like books, any, you know, things in magazines and so on, anthologies. But I've written an awful lot, and in many genres, and it may not be absolutely wonderful, but I think it's all pretty good in the scheme of things. It's certainly well written. Um, whether it's a, I've written a screenplay, you know, novella, autobiography, novel. Um, so, so then when people, I do sometimes say I'm a writer. I, I, I would rather say rights in my, if I'm going to have a two line thing, I'll say rights. But I feel less bad about that because it doesn't imply that it's also art. It's just that you write. It could be shitty writing. But, but it reminds me also, just now thinking about it, that when I was, um, I was trying to get a visa to uh, Myanmar, to Burma, and I went, applied for it. I was in Bangkok, and I applied for this visa. And it was, it was they didn't have any computers, these Burmese officials, it was sort of outdoors, and they, we were filling out the forms in triplicate. In, if we were filling out the forms in triplicate with carbon paper between the leaves, between the sheets. And I had written, in order to, you know, to get a visa, I had to write my profession, so I wrote writer. And he said to me, he gave it back to me, said, writer's no good. I said, why, what's wrong? Because that implied journalist. So I said, well, I'm also a psychologist. He said, that's good, right, psychologist. So I got my visa. So anyway, it's just very fraught for, fraught for me. I mean, somebody says they're a carpenter. I wouldn't say, you know. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, are you? Yeah. Right, but, but do you think that it's about being, the term artist could refer to your profession, how you make a living. It could refer to um, your identity, Right, because that's what. Oh, that's like what you, you have the soul of an artist, kind no, of thing. No, or just like, oh, I'm an artist, you know, and it's, a, you know, uh, uh, don't blame me, I'm an artist, or I just, you know, I behave. Like, it, it's it's a way of seeing yourself. It's a, it, I mean, because I see. Yeah, because you know, I think art can also be um, like a belief system. You know, uh, it could be like a religion, right? You could like being a. Being a Marxist, if you're a Marxist, everything you view is is is, is through that prism. So if, if you're, you're an artist, I see. If you're a Baptist, if you're you know a Calvinist, you know that it's a worldview. It's a worldview. So then, you know, you might sit, you know, the way you decorate your house, the way you smell a flower, you know, you appreciate art and things when you talk is from that point of view. So and then you allowed to dress that way too, right? So, so, but that's I think what you were saying is you wanted to be thought of, not necessarily as having I, that profession when you were younger. Not not necessarily that people would say, "Oh, you must make money selling paintings," mm. but they look at you and think, yes, "Oh, it, you're you're that kind of a person." You have the spirit of an artist, right? Yeah, you're you're uh, you know, mm. and, right? So, or being a nihilist, or being mm. you, you know an activist. I mean, there 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 are other identities that you might put on yourself, you know. But I think being that's I mean, that's one of the questions I have is, do you, do we need to be to make a living from art? Mm. And is it is it that? So if somebody says to you, because I think there's a difference between saying, what are you, and what do you do, right? So if what do you do suggests like, well, you know, I have. How do you money. make your money? How do you make your income? Right. Yeah. So, Absolutely. And so I think if somebody comes up to you at a cocktail party and says, you know, what do you do, and you say I'm an artist, what would they, what do you think they would say in response? With, I think they'd think you're presumptuous. Do you? I mean, what oh, if, I would. I would feel that if I said that to somebody who didn't know me. Yeah. But who, so, who do you think it's valid to, for them to call themselves an artist? Who? Somebody who's got a body of work. So they've proven themselves. Yeah. They, they make. I, I always dislike the phrase to make art because again, it has the same thing. Well, how do you know it's art that you're making? It could be just paintings. I mean. But it what could, is a painting if it isn't art? What is it? A, I don't know. I mean, I can understand you say, uh, you know, I'm a performance artist, and then I would say, well, that's not art. But if somebody makes a painting, it may not be good art, but 
But it's hard to debate that it has any other purpose other than being art. But the, yeah, but it's there. You can see it. Maybe that's what it is. It can be judged. It can be viewed. It can right. it exists. But you see, the, 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 so the complication. Somebody made it. But the complication thing is, if I say I'm a doctor, you're not going to decide whether or not I'm a good doctor, and only if I'm a good doctor am I allowed to be a doctor. But when it comes to being an artist, somehow. Well, if you're a doctor, you have cre accreditation. You have a diploma. Say you went to art school. See. Take Jack. Jack graduated in, with a degree, a Bachelor of Arts. He has a degree in fine art, you know? So if he calls himself an artist, this is what pr prompted this whole conversation. You said you didn't feel comfortable with that idea, but I mean, he went to the Rodin School of Design, which is an art school. He has a Bachelor of Arts, and he majored in fine art. So if he, was, if he went to law school, if he went to but medical school. But being an artist is, is also a present, dis, uh, a present, a, contemp a contemporary description of who you are. So you can have had all that, done all that stuff, but that doesn't mean you are an artist now, maybe? I mean, this description you have of the sort of enduring, that it's your spirit, let's call it shorthand, then it wouldn't matter. But if you are an art, what if you are an art, you, were, you went to art school, you did all that, and then you never painted again? Are you still an artist? I don't know. You think you would be? I don't know. I'm not. Oh. I don't have an. I don't have an answer to any of this. I'm not sure what I think. I think that I th I'm trying to break down, and not just your point of view, but just in general. What? Where's the sticking point? What's the problem? Right. But because do other people have this problem? Yeah, I think oh, a lot of oh, people. Okay. No, I think this. I mean, I have. I have this problem. I think a lot of people do, and I think a lot of people, particularly people who didn't go to an art school. Yeah. Right. So that's the illegitimate to, part of it. Right. Yeah. But, Vincent van Gogh, would you say he was an artist? Yeah. Okay, so Vincent van Gogh didn't go to art school, right? He didn't sell art. He didn't make a living from art. But he wasn't considered an artist then, was he? Of course he was. What else was he? If people, if people, if people came up to Vincent van Gogh and said, what are you? He probably would have said, I'm a painter. But he was certainly an, an artist. And, and maybe that's also the difference is I think... You but know, he was uh, suffered for it, or maybe that's what it was. Uh, you know, that's sort of silly to say that. Yeah, but. because I think, um, I mean, was Andy Warhol an artist? I don't know. I never got that. So then, he was. He was an artist. Well, what was he not an artist? I mean, what, I mean, I think there's a problem in saying that being an artist is such a high threshold mm. that virtually nobody's allowed to be an artist. I mean, that's All right. Well, what if a child, a you know, child making little paintings and pictures. Would you call the child an artist? He's making or she's making art in, the, in that I, sense that it's a house and trees or whatever. I, I don't think it's necessary to put a label on a kid like that. Uh, I mean, if the kid danced, would I say he was a dancer? If the kid sang, would I say he's a singer? I mean, sort of. But I, I, don't think that, I don't think they need an identity. I think their main identity is being a kid, probably. But. Well, I think with painter, there's the, the art. The, that's it. You know, painter. The word painter doesn't doesn't provoke any of these thoughts any more than dancer or singer does. But if somebody says I'm a painter, then I assume that you spend your time painting. Yeah. And if I'm a writer, I assume you spend your time writing. But those are activities. Right. Art has the meta meta thing of being valuable and important and part of the history of mankind's, you Yeah, know. and that's what I'm thinking too, is, is if you say you're an artist, does that mean that you have decided that what you make has such worth that therefore, um, you know, you have conferred this badge upon yourself that like and what I'm making is art. Yeah, and you're therefore part of the canon. Yeah, but I mean, again, it just feels like a, uh, a barrier that is problematic because I think if you're not comfortable with saying you're an artist, then maybe you can't um, do the work that's required to be a really good artist. You know, because you don't feel like you can make sacrifices for it. You don't feel like it's your identity. That you know. So whereas if you were a, a violinist, you would do the work to be a good violinist. You, you practice, practice. You practice. practice right? yeah. And and you know, but somehow making art, we put this barrier against it. And I wonder where does that barrier come from? It means that other people have to acknowledge That's that true. what you do is of quality enough, right? And when we say other people, we mean authorities. We mean the market. Or your peers, maybe. Well, who Depending. are your peers? Well, <laughs> you, you, your peers plus one. But who are yeah. your peers? Other artists. 
you know, people, I don't know, just who have more credibility or more... But, but see how unfair that is? I mean, say, say, I mean, Vincent van Gogh, a lot of people who are other impressionists didn't think he was a particularly good painter. Yeah. So, um, and I, th I think, no, I think it's, are you in a gallery? If you're in a gallery, would you say, I mean, if somebody says, I'm an artist, and you say, well, do, do you show? And you say, yes, I'm re represented by Pace Gallery. Would that end the discussion? Would you say, well, clearly he's Probably. Or, then or, then or, you or get to say whether it's good art or bad art, but you do have to say it's art, because it's in an art gallery. Because, so in other words, when the market determines the market your determines value... It. I and, think, and think see, that's, see, that's un that, unfortunately, that's what it, we, we seem to be devolving But I think that that's to. a problem, because, I mean... I agree. As individual, I mean, if, if I'm a poet, do I have to be a published poet? If I'm a writer, do I have to be... In other words, for me to have this identity, I have to get the permission of other people to be allowed to have it. Well, you know, then we, maybe this gets into self-publishing because I don't know what the equivalent of self-publishing is with art. I mean, my leafages, I published them. I made cards of them. I made prints of them. People bought the prints. Right. So, so they, there was a physical form. And if you're a writer, you can self-publish your book. And if you're a poet, you can self-publish some chapbook or something, you know. All right, but say somebody said, you know what, I rented out a gallery and I had a show there. Artists do that. Or say you didn't even say that. Say you said, I have an Etsy store and I sell my art online yeah. and, and people buy it. So, so, so therefore, I, I don't have the intermediary of a gallerist mm -hmm. who makes, takes 50% of my money from me. And who makes the decision? Who, who so I'm a smart business person and I'm an artist. But I'm not vetted. That's what it is. I know, but vetted again by the establishment. So yeah. the idea that art, and art is this form that we think should be independent, it should be uh, it should be breaking new ground, right? I mean, the whole thing about art is... And it should come from the soul, too. You but one, know, but yeah. A key, yeah, but a key thing about art is that it's new, right? This, I mean, it's art, original. Be original, new, new thoughts, new ideas. So the fact that, you know, there was a Salon de Refusé, the fact that, that, that there are artists who are ahead of their time, the fact that, that um, people don't always know art at the time, you know, does, again, going back to Van Gogh, people didn't buy his art. Does that mean th that he wasn't valid? I mean, I think now to look at a Van Gogh painting in a museum and say, well, it's debatable whether he was an artist. I mean, I think you, people would think you were an idiot if you said yeah. that. So, yeah. so, so I, think, I think that's the problem we have is like, does our identity have to be tied into what um, the marketplace... I mean, it just seems irrelevant. Well, somehow an external... Validator, validator. Of but, but that's not true of so many other no, no, identities. No. You know, if I say I'm an activist, well, let me see how many uh, you know signatures did you get on petitions? How many congress? I mean, nobody would think to debate that. If you, if you want to call yourself an activist, then great. You yeah, it's not particularly valued, I suppose. Um, I think, ironically, this by by talking about an artist in this way, which I think you know, I think you and I. Have Together, there is, we sort of come to some understanding. But ironically, what it's done is it's placed too much value on art. It's made an artist, an art, piece of art too valuable that all of these criteria have to be passed and, and all these, these vettings have to take place before it can be considered art. Well, I think that's again a function of the, of the marketplace because the marketplace doesn't want to have everybody and his brother say he's an artist because then there's no... He values the, the well, real no, ones. Well, the, 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 the supply becomes endless and therefore, mm. therefore you know, it exceeds demand and the value of it all goes down. I think if you go back 500 years and you go to the Renaissance, let's say, and you look at you know, Michelangelo, you know, I think Michelangelo probably wouldn't have called himself an artist. I don't even think that that term really existed back then. He would have said, I'm a sculptor or whatever it is. It was a trade, right? It was a trade back then. It was a craft, and that was perfectly fine. And, and so you hired a sculptor to make a sculpture for and they, your and they had, church. And they had assistants. Yeah, I don't think that that's relevant either way. I mean, I think artists still have assistants. That's, yeah. that, that's not the point. I think the point is that, that our relationship with art has changed, where now it's become a commodity. 
I mean, I think when Michelangelo made the sculpture, the Pope didn't think, oh, great, I can sell this later on. You know, there wasn't a trade so in So how art. is it a commodity now? In what sense? Because you buy and sell it. Oh. So there's a whole system set up to... Assess its value. Assess its value, assess its, uh, its Worth, value yeah. as, a, um, as an investment. Is it going to go up over time? So if, if there isn't somebody arbitrating that and saying this is art and that isn't art, then it's... But the point is that fairly small system, right, of the people who buy and sell, you know, high art and museums and galleries, does your own identity have to be enslaved by that? Do you have to say, you know, I'm not allowed, I'm not permitted to call myself this because I'm not part of that system? It's like it just seems I, like a very unartistic point of view to have. Yeah, you know? it's like saying if, if, I, if I don't live in a mansion... Am I per permitted to call my humble abode a house? I mean, that's what struck me. But so, so then there's two things. Either we bring down great art to our level, or we elevate our level to great art. Well, to o occupy the same space is what I mean. I mean, possibly. Or maybe you just say, you know, I don't see art as a competitive activity. You know, in the marketplace, it is competitive. You know, Van Gogh is worth X and, uh, you know, Warhol is worth, worth Y. And that goes up back and forth. And I have a limited amount of money to spend, so I decide where I'm going to spend it here or there. Okay. But if I'm making art to express myself, to, re to relate to the world, it's my point of view about the world. It's how I see things. It's how I feel about myself. So Why should we have another it? word for it? I mean, I like to use the term artist with a small a, which kind of violates some of the... But not in air quote, not in quotation marks. No, this is a podcast. We don't have, we don't show. Well, you can have quotation marks that's as true. a. Would artists be? Um, but that's that's demeaning. I mean, I think, it is. It is. And I think I, I think if I, I, I don't really know the answer because I think again, if you said I'm a sculptor, would you have any of these problems? I'm a painter. You know, I mean, I think then the assumption. Say you said I'm a painter. Oh, um, so you just must paint all day? Well, yeah, outside of my shift at Starbucks. <laughs> right? So if, mm. I, if I said that, would you say, well, you're really a barista. You're not a, you're not yeah. a, you're not a painter. I mean, then, then that's insulting. And uh, I think of myself, I mean, I think of friends of mine who are professional painters whose paintings have sold for millions of dollars. And for many years when they began, they were carpenters. Or, you know, they were what? Carpenters, oh, carp or they were, you know, they were move, move, drove a moving van, whatever. Does that diminish them as an artist? I don't know. You know, and I think going back to, to Jack talking about, um, you know, he now works in production, but he has a studio, and he goes and draws and paints. If somebody said to him, what are you, he would probably say, I work in production. Because would he, he doesn't call himself an artist? Maybe I think he's confident enough in his own creative abilities that it's not an issue for him. Yeah. If somebody said, oh, you're an artist, you would say, oh, I guess. I guess, yeah. Yeah. So, is, so, I mean, I think the difference is still if you call yourself one, if you, if you don't, uh, um, what's the word? Wait, let me get this word. If you... Self-proclaim, self-identify? No, but, you know, if, if you like with a queen... Confers upon you? That's yeah. If, if somebody confers upon you the, the, the title of artist, I don't think you'd argue. But if you confer it upon yourself, somebody would say, oh, what kind of artist are you? Oh. Okay, but, but in this time that we live in, where there's a lot of discussion about identity, right? Your gender identity, for instance, mm -hmm. right? And I think people have decided that I'm going to self-identify and I expect everybody else to respect this identity that I've taken. The gender part. Right. So why shouldn't it be the same as an art? In other words, why do I have to allow the patriarchy or the capitalist class to decide whether or not I am this? Mm -hmm. So, and your response to that would probably be, then fine, call yourself whatever you want, but I don't think of you as an artist. So it's really, I have to elevate my, my self-identity, my self-image to... I think you have, an, you have an issue with the term artist because of your own history with it. And I, frankly, because I'm your son, probably have inherited some of that too. But I think, you know, um, for me as a writer, I've often thought, 
I mean, I've published a dozen books. I've been paid my entire life to sit and put words on a page. So you can call yourself an author. Yeah, I mean, I'm, but I think, again, I would feel uncomfortable with, probably with either of those terms. I think when I was a copywriter in advertising, if somebody said to me, what are you? I said, I'm a copywriter. I wouldn't have had any issue with that. Right. But I think to say I'm a writer, again, I would have felt like a, people expect me to be sort of sitting there with uh, you know, a glass of scotch and a typewriter mm -hmm. knocking out novels, and it would have seemed like, again, I'm misrepresenting myself. It's, 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 a, it's a difficult thing. we hope to accomplish with this podcast is to talk about the sorts of things that are on your mind. It can be hard to come across like-minded people, and I've always hoped that Sketchbook School would be a place to find your tribe. So far, our huge community of some 50,000 people has proven to be just that, and I hope that this podcast and our zine and our courses all capture the sorts of things that we care about, that we're interested in, that we like to talk about. Which brings me back to SketchCon. We call it the unconventional art convention because, frankly, at SketchBook School, we like to come up with our own way of doing things. So we invited about 20 of our faculty to come to Pasadena to share their work, to give demonstrations, and to give people hands-on help with their own sketchbooks. They're going to talk about their tools and techniques, show their own sketchbooks, lead us on sketch crawls, show us how they draw still lifes and life models and landscapes and be available to answer your questions and to just hang out. We also invited some other friends to talk to us, like Austin Cleon, the best-selling author of Steel Like an Artist. If you don't have his books, pause this podcast and order them immediately. I promise you, you'll love them. We also have loads of experts on all things art supplies coming to talk to us, too. There will be people from Windsor & Newton, from Hanna Müller, which is Europe's leading uh, paper and sketchbook maker, from Crescent Creative Products, from Dale & Rowney, and Blick Art Materials is going to be building a special store for us right in the convention hall so we can shop till we all drop. It's going to be loads of fun, and I really hope that I'll see you there. The Westin in Pasadena, California, November 2nd through 4th. To find out loads more about it and to sign up, get over to sketchcon.com. That's con with a K because that's how we do. All right, back to my investigation of the artist's label and how I could get comfortable with it. I called up my friend Amanda Rentschler for her point of view. Amanda is a talented dancer and a zine publisher and a writer and the editor of the Sketchbook School Zine. She is creative to her core, and I had a feeling that she might have a different perspective to contribute to this discussion. I was having this conversation with my mother and we were talking about the fact that um, she always has an issue with people calling themselves artists or even other people calling themselves calling them artists she feels like it's okay to call somebody for somebody to call themselves a painter or a dancer or whatever but when it comes to being an artist that is like ca calling yourself a genius and it's just inappropriate um, to you know, say that about themselves. And a lot of people do have issues with calling themselves artists. I mean, I have issues with it too. So I just kind of wanted to hear, like, what do you think about that whole issue? Hmm. I mean, I think, um, I think that everybody should call themselves an artist. <laughs> I disagree. I think um, the idea of maybe specifying the type of art you're doing, like calling myself a painter or a dancer, it reduces your um your outlets and 
Um, I think if you call yourself an artist, it allows you to play in a lot of different mediums and even question what is art and is like the way I live my life or are intentional things I'm doing in the kitchen when I cook dinner art? And um, am I being an artist when I do simple things in my life that way? So you see an art, you see the term artist as being like non-denominational. It's like you're just an artist and then you might be an artist who's also a dancer or an artist who is a dancer or is a painter or whatever. Absolutely. Abs- I think being an artist is about being intentional with what you're doing. I mean, I think you, you think about maybe like someone who works on cars, an auto mechanic, and they can do that artfully. And I would go so far as to call them an artist in their field. That's not necessarily someone painting or someone, you know, doing a performance on stage, but it, they're still an artist because they're putting intention behind their actions. So does it have anything to do with quality? In other words, like what if you what if what you do is like just amateurish and um, lame? Is it still right to be an artist? Uh, who's judging what you're doing? <laughs> Is that you judging? Well, say you do judge it. Say you go like, oh, I just I just started to draw. I'm not really very good at it. I don't really have a lot of confidence in what I'm doing. You think it's okay for you to say, but I'm an artist. Definitely. Definitely. I think all artists start somewhere and um, the judgment is natural even when you're creating beautiful work. I think some of the best pieces, um, when I look back at, things that I've performed. And I think that, you know, it's the essence of what I was trying to get at on stage. Um, It doesn't mean in that moment I wasn't critical and wasn't like, this is crap sometimes. And I think, again, like allowing yourself to take on that label gives you the freedom to continue to play in it. If you're creating a piece and you're not happy with it, or if it's just like some little sketch and you still are able to say, I'm an artist, then you'll keep going with that. That's kind of what I was saying to her is that I think that if you refuse to say that you're an artist, then then it, it becomes harder for you to say like, well, I'm going to devote time to doing this or I'm going to devote resources to it, you know, because if you say, well, I'm not really an artist. So like, why am I, you know, spending all this time and energy in it? It's not like I'm really an artist. Yeah. And it's kind of been fuel to keep me going. I mean, my mom always said I was an artist, even when I was little, um, and just like looking at a sunset, she would be like, you can appreciate the colors in the sky. You're an artist. And as I've grown up, there have been periods where I haven't created anything, but I've still believed that about myself. So it's given me a freedom to go back in at any angle I want, like whether I'm dancing or writing. I can just kind of jump back into that, to making. So do you think you have to make art to be an artist? No. No. I don't. How does that that, that work? (laughs) Um, I think, again, you can ask the really broad question, what is art? I mean, I I think if I'm not making any work, it, it, it doesn't mean that I'm not filling my well or absorbing the world in a way that's ultimately going to manifest in some art. And I still think that that action is making me an artist, being able to intentionally look at the world around me, even just seeing the beauty in the world around me. Um, And I don't know when that inspiration will come out as a piece of art, but even these moments of stagnant non-making are still filling my well to, you know, be, to create something and to, I think it's still valid to call yourself an artist in those times. Do you think art is a religion? <laughs> I think it's a way of life. I think it's a philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I do too. I think it's a, it's a worldview. I mean, I think there are people who... I don't think it's quite right to say everybody is an artist. I think it's okay to say everybody could be an artist. I mean, I think, again, like, if it is a worldview, not everybody has it. There are people who are like, I don't know, I just, you know, watch football and make sandwiches and, you know, do my job as a mechanic. (laughs) And then it's, you know, and I I think you could say to them, well, do you appreciate the beauty of a car? 
Do you appreciate the design of a transmission? Do you like the sound of a well-tuned engine? Um, do you like the way that um, the elegance of a, of a football game with great strategy and with beautiful performances by the players? I mean, you can get into an art point of view on kind of anything. Well, I, yeah, I think it goes back to what I was saying about intention and coupled with that is attention. I think both of those things together make you an artist when you're paying attention and then when you're behaving in an intentional way. I was, um, oh, never mind. My mind just went blank. <laughs> I, I mean, I think one of the reasons that that my mother has this objection and my mother's not American. And I think that she feels like there's a, an American tendency to self-congratulation and to, you know, telling every, you know, giving every kid on the soccer team a trophy. Mm -hmm. And even if they lose, you know, that there's this feeling that like, it's too easy, you know, and the things that are valuable take effort and perseverance and, uh, and in the end judgment, I think, is this good? Um, and the question becomes like, does art and art as being an artist lose its meaning if it's too easily granted? I, I think art enhances life. And I don't think that that is, um, that is uh, something that I agree with, like putting judgment or um, like personal judgment on when you're talking about, am I an artist? Um, I don't think it holds the same rules as like, did I win the soccer game? I think um, calling yourself an artist and viewing everything you do um, or, you know, viewing the way that you live your life in an artful way can only enhance your quality of life and the people around you. Um, I think the value is for someone else to decide what it like did what I make resonate with you. But the act of making, I think everyone should just be a creative. And in being a creative, they are an artist. I think part of the hesitation is also, um, if somebody says to me, so what are you? And you say, oh, I'm an artist. Yeah. And then the response is going to be, oh, like, what, what do you do? Um, you know, I, I paint and draw. Oh, really? Um, are you in a gallery? No, not really. You know, I just, oh, so it's so your hobby? Um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I really, I care a lot about it. I do it a lot. Oh, that's cool. But so what is it? You, so what are you? Uh, I, well, I'm accountant. Uh -huh. Oh, that's, that's what I meant. Well, that again, you know, and, and, then, and then the fear is also like that the person is going to go like, that person was, he said he was an artist. He's actually an accountant. Right. Well, there's expectations with the words, but that's out of your control. Everybody has a different idea of what an artist is. And I was thinking about this, um, when somebody says to me, I'm an artist, when they say that about themselves, my first response isn't, no, you aren't. And even if I'm looking at the work that they make, or even if it's just a sketchbook where they've dabbled in something, I never think like, well, that person's not an artist. Even if it's like work that I, uh, very, very simple. I mean, if it's not work that I connect with, that's what I think that work isn't specifically speaking to me. But I don't ever push back on their ideas of themselves. If they think they're an artist, I believe them. Yeah, but maybe that's because you're an artist. <laughs> In other words, no, you know what I mean? If like, if, if I speak to, if I, 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 I agree with you. I think if I ever say to an artist, I'm an artist, they're like, cool. But if I say to somebody who's not an artist and who probably views artists with suspicion, you know, um, it becomes a bit more embarrassing if they call you on it, you know, like, well, what do you mean by that? I mean, like you would never say I'm a dentist. Oh, really? Oh, are you? Mm. You know, but I think when it comes to being an artist, it's because I think we also have this view of artists as potentially con men. I mean, it's, you call them a con artist, you know, and we have this fear that like, oh, you're, a, oh, you're a conceptual artist. Oh, you're a performance artist. Like, what is that even? And then you get into a whole kind of debate with somebody that normally you would never have with somebody if they told you what they do. But those moments, I mean, you can take them personally or you can take it as an opportunity to explain your philosophy, if you will, on your art or what you're doing. I mean, again, I think it, 
even if I'm talking to somebody who's not an artist and they're like, well, what's it? I mean, and I have this experience all the time because I'm a dancer. And the moment that you tell someone they're a dancer, you're a dancer, they don't go to professional dance. They go other places with their mind and you have to like reel them back into, no, I'm talking about contemporary dance, fine art dance. And their response, I don't let it touch my value my personal value. I don't let it affect whether I believe I'm an artist or not. I just see that as a place where they don't understand what I'm doing and an opportunity to discuss it with them. Right. I mean, it's in the end, you were allowed to choose our identity. Yeah. I think that's the difference. I think it's complicated because on the one hand, being an artist is an identity. On another hand, it's a job. On another hand, it's a, a worldview. You know, and, um, you know, those those can be different things. So you can say, I see myself as an artist. Or somebody else could say, you know, you're a real artist. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I, I think that that's the complicated thing is um, we don't know whether we're in assuming this identity, whether we're giving up other ones. You know, um, and I think that's a big fear that people have is like, I'd like to be an artist, but then I'd have to give up my job as an accountant. No, I think you take control of the label. You don't let somebody else do it for you. Um, especially if there's a, a personal value to you in calling yourself an artist, which I think is, you know, you create or you explore different mediums or you see the world in a more beautiful way. And you don't let somebody else impart that on you. You take control of the label. I think that's good advice. I think, I think it, it can be challenging for people because they ultimately, we all want other people to accept our identity too. You know, you don't want to be like, well, I think I'm an artist, but nobody else does. That's not really sad. Yeah, but I mean, in a ridiculous example, you think about it, someone who confidently tells you they have, I don't know, green eyes. Um, you're not going to really spend time being like, but I think that they're blue, but I think that they're brown. And they're like, no, I have green eyes. I've had green eyes since birth. I mean, there's maybe an element of pushback, but there's also like if someone comes to you with a confident belief about themselves you accept it as truth. I do. Yeah. I think you want to be surrounded by supportive people, but I, th I, th I think people are threatened by the idea of somebody being an artist. I think, I think people feel like, um, you know, it's, it's an odd kind of job to have. It's not clear that it's going to, you know, you know, if you become an artist, are you going to then uh, not be able to pay the rent? Um, mm -hmm. Are you going to, do things that challenge me and make me feel uncomfortable. Um, so I, I think, you know, I think that there is, it's, it's different than having green eyes in that if you have green eyes, fine, whatever. But if you say you're an artist, then I just, I have to really think hard about it. Mm. I think that's partly, partly to do with our whole attitude towards artists, you know? Yeah. So I think, I think people are afraid. So, so what would you say to somebody who says, I'm afraid to say that I'm an artist. I mean, I, I, I'm embarrassed. I, 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 if, if somebody asked me, I would, I, I'm not sure what I would say. Um, I think I would tell them just to try it on. <laughs> try it on. You don't have to even tell other people at first that you're an artist. You don't have to, you know, tell your mother or your, you know, family that you're an artist, but try it on on yourself. I would say spend a week calling yourself an artist to yourself and seeing if it enhances your view. And then, you know, your waitress at breakfast, you know, be like, what do you do? Oh, you're a waitress, but you're also whatever. I'm an artist. See how it feels to just say those things um, and see if it brings you any more confidence and peace about what you're doing. That's great advice. Yeah. It's like coming out in any other form would be, yeah. I think. Just having the confidence to call yourself something and believe it about yourself. Like believe that it's an okay label for you to use. I think it's also interesting to think what would it mean if I was an artist? Like what would that, how would that empower me? How would that change my life if I was confident with that? And I think if you thought about that and were able to come up with some satisfying answers, that would be what you could go back to when you feel wanted. Yeah, right? definitely. And I mean, for me, again, I, I think I've had this privilege sense where I've grown up in a family that has always called me an artist. So I've never had to really question whether I was one or what it would mean if I called myself one. But I've had this privilege of that label just being 
part of who I am and supported by the people around me. Um, and so I speak from that place, definitely. But again, it benefits me in that even if I'm not creating art, I'm seeing the world in an artful way. I'm absorbing it and, um, and being inspired by it all of the time. I'll give you the last word. That was excellent. Cool. Done. All right. So from now on, you're going to do the podcast. <laughs> I'm going to go on vacation and uh, it's mine. <laughs> you can take over. It's all yours. You can call it whatever you want to. <laughs> so, all right. So coming up next week, we'll have Amanda hosting <laughs> future episodes of art for all. And, uh, I was your host, Danny Gregory. <laughs> peace, peace, peace out. out. you got some beautiful creative work done while you listen to these conversations and I hope that you found them useful if you did or if you didn't give us some feedback we try to make lots of different sorts of episodes for you on this podcast and to cover lots of different topics we think you'll find useful and we'd love to hear from you so we can make art for all even better you can email me at danny at sketchbookschool.com or you can come up and chat with me in Pasadena on November 2nd and 4th you can even buy me a drink at the bar. Until next time, I'm Danny Gregory, and this is Art for All.